Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head back to Russia for the first time in quite a little while. I think it's been a little bit over six months since I last reviewed the Russian beers that Hannah very kindly gave to me. So it's nice to return after uh, quite a length of time actually. My experiences with the Russian craft beers have always been very, very positive and hopefully this is another one that lives up to that kind of billing if you like. So we were very lucky in April of 2020 to get some Russian beers through the Tiferid sortiment in Sistemberlaga and for this first review we are going to go back to St. Petersburg or Petersburg as you would say in Russian. We're going to return to AF Brew who I have reviewed on the channel before and we're having a taste of the Red Rum which is an Imperial Red IPA coming in at 8.8% ABV. So um, yeah if you've watched the channel before you will know that I um, you will know that I love Imperial Red IPAs, so hopefully this one turns out to be a very good one. The last beer that I had from AF Brew was um, that was the Fear of the Zafir, which was a collaboration with Lervig, and that was one of these big kind of cakey Imperial Stouts, and it was really nice. So definitely cool to try something from the hoppy end of the spectrum from these guys. The other thing when I bought this beer was that it had a white sticker over the scary little girls' faces, so I'm guessing that that is something that's censored through the, um, you know, under the system Bolaga rules actually, but I took that off for the for doing the review because I thought it looked a bit stupid to be honest. But um, yeah, really curious to see how this one turns out, an Imperial Red IPA at 8.8% and hopefully it turns out to be very nice. This one does have good ratings on Rate Beer and Untapped and things like that. I think it was, was it like a 3.97 or something that it had on Untapped. But um, yeah, I always take these peer review sites with a bit of a pinch of salt because not all of them are kind of moderated or whatever, but um, they do always give you a fairly good kind of barometer and things like that. But very curious to see how this one turns out. Definitely cool to return to AF Brew after a little while and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. Quite excited to do more Russian reviews for you. You will see one more, well I've actually got two more uh, Russian beers that have Russian breweries involved in them that you'll see over the kind of next week or two so keep an eye out for those. But yeah, um, as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from AF Brew before. No doubt there will be some more at some point in the near future. You will see one and hopefully we can get more beyond that quite soon. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Russian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, which just happens to be whenever Russian beers get out of Russia. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about AF Brew then. So AF Brew are based in St. Petersburg as I mentioned earlier and they were founded back in 2012 by Nikita Filipov, Dmitry Buldakov and Artem Kolchikov. So they had previously worked for Baltica, the big Russian beer producer, and they were interested in experimental beer and they said there was a bit of a witch hunt for them in the company when they started brewing their own stuff um, because um, they actually received an appointment with the CEO of Baltica who told them they had to stop brewing their small batch beers because this was apparently a threat to this massive company which is just you know nonsense basically and um, but these guys uh, they kept with it and they started off as a gypsy brewery so they brewed their beers in a lot of other places before eventually they built their own brewery in November 2016 and this brewery also has an on-site tap room and they own the Red Rum Bar in the city as well so AF stands for anti-factory and they liked how uh, you know the beer can give you, they basically chose this name because they felt that that was a good way of describing that craft beer can give you an escape from the everyday kind of run of the mill life. But as of March 2020, these guys have produced 175 different types of beer and I think it's fair to say that these guys are one of the better known Russian craft breweries here in Europe. These guys and Zagovor and I think Stam are probably the best known 
um, Russian breweries at the moment. So um, yeah, these guys are definitely worth checking out if you uh, get the chance. And I've noticed that these, the, the AF and uh, Zagovor, they've been collaborating with a lot of brew with a lot of breweries. They have been doing quite a few things with their uh, breweries here in Scandinavia, and I think they're starting to do things with other breweries in different countries across Europe as well. So you will see their name coming out a little bit more, and hopefully this is the start of their beers starting to get exported across the continent a little bit more. But yeah, um, that's all I can really tell you about AF Brew for the moment. Um, if you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. I'm, I'm guessing that they probably have a VK as well, which is the Russian kind of social media site. Um, that's always quite interesting to go and have a little look at. Um, but of course, you can check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate profiles of the brewery as well to get more information on all the different beers that they've done. 175 beers is pretty impressive, so I'm guessing that these guys are one of the more prolific Russian craft breweries. But yeah, um, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So as I told you at the start of the video, this one is an 8.8% Imperial Red IPA, the Red Rum Special Edition. And apparently this beer was brewed for the opening of the Red Rum Bar and it's based just on the original Red Rum, which was a single kind of red IPA, if that makes sense. It was just a regular IPA, but they said they put double the amount of hops and double the malt in this one. So that's why it's called the Red Rum um, special edition. It says on the side here, uh, we are AF Brew. We started brewing unorthodox beers even before anything in our country turned craft. We've been aiming to transform our fantasy in, into material and desirable product. And there we are. We rose against the boring generic beers in the world around us and in the faraway 2012 we named ourselves Anti-Factory or AF Brew in short. We've always wanted to be a few steps ahead and to lead the way uh, to the world of new flavours and emotions. What we do is our whole existence. And there you can see um, AF Brew in St. Petersburg, the Russian Federation. Which is pretty cool. It's definitely nice to see the Russian beers making it out here a little bit more. And I'm getting another bottle cap for my collection too, so that's pretty damn awesome. So yeah, this was one of two, let me turn that the right way up, this is one of two AF Brew beers that we got in the um, Tilferid sortiment in the um, small part, uh, the, the Tilferid sortiment small parties, whatever you want to call it, on the 3rd of um, April 2020. And this one was imported into Sweden apparently by Original Brands Stockholm. So um, yeah, pretty cool I have to say. And as I said, when this one was in the shop they had a white sticker over the scary little girls' faces. I guess probably some people can get anxiety, um, yeah, well not anxiety, panic attacks or whatever from um, seeing those kind of things. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Oh, this smells lovely as soon as you open it up. Yeah. So yeah, let's get this guy out, and we'll get on with the tasting. I noticed there was quite a wee bit of sediment in this one at the bottom, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that um, this one hasn't been sitting in the warehouse for too long. That was a mistake that quite a lot of these warehouses that were giving beers to Seastin Bolaget used to make, because they um, they always used to. Um, you know, they always used to let them sit for far too long and stuff like that. And then when we were getting them in Seaston Balaga, they just weren't fresh. But um, yeah, as you can see with this beer, if I hold this one up to the light, this one's actually a very nice kind of coppery colour. You can see one or two of the little bits of sediment just kind of floating around in this one. There's a solid one third finger of a frothy, kind of, I would say sort of beigey tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there. A few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know, overall, it looks pretty nice. And I mean, this is what you would expect in terms of a red IPA, to be honest with you. I'm not sure, probably the boil, in terms of the colour, probably this one's using a few different, there's probably a few rye malts or something like that in here that's giving it its colour, and probably it's got a slightly longer boil as well. I do like that, the colour of this one pretty much actually matches the, um, it pretty much matches the, um, the label that's on this beer, so I have to say that is pretty cool actually. So um, yeah, quite a few breweries doing that these days, but nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its uh, appearance as a red, as an imperial red IPA. You do expect these to have a, a good bit of colour to them, especially since there's higher malt content and things. But yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and just uh, and see how we get on with this one. I'm really curious to see how this beer turns out, so yeah. Yeah, 
one of the neighbours is out doing something that's been going on for ages. It's annoying. But yeah. Um, but yeah, with this one, with this one, you can smell straight away. It's got a lovely big kind of malty base to it. I will say straight away, this one is not at its freshest. So, you know, um, what, it might be difficult. You know, that might be one of the difficulties with bringing beer out of Russia. But, you know, I will say to um, original brand Stockholm, if you are going to import IPAs, you need to make sure that they're going to get into the shop on time. Because I can tell straight away from the aroma in this one, it's not in its best condition. This one's been in. It's been in the bottle. It's either not been stored at the right temperature. It's been either either that or it's been stored in the light. You can tell from the aroma of this one that it's not quite in its uh, its prime condition. So we will need to consider that going forward. The other thing as well, when you've got this amount of sediment, you know, that's one of the other kind of telltale signs. So original brand Stockholm, if you're watching, you need to make sure these beers are brought in in good time to get into the shop. You can't have IPAs sitting there. For, for great lengths of time because it says this one is best before the 5th of uh, it says this one is best before the 5th of February 2021 and that makes me think it's probably been bottled on the 5th of February 2020 and then it's come into to Sweden so you know we're getting this one on the 4th so this beer has probably been in the bottle about two months and that is a bit too long for, uh, for the IPAs to be in good condition. You're, really, you're talking about four weeks max, so if you're importing beers, you need to be kind of on this. So we'll take that with a pinch of salt and we'll see how the beer turns out. Hopefully it's still in pretty good nick. It did smell good when we opened up the bottle, but we need to make sure that, um, well, we just need to make sure with the taste, of course, but yeah. So straight away with this one, the malt character is in quite good condition, so you can smell that lovely kind of big bready malt base that you'd expect of a big IPA like this. You've got some lovely kind of brown bready characters to this one. Um, there's some sweet caramel in there, good little bit of a, a kind of biscuity quality as well. Um, I don't know exactly what malts are likely to be in this one, but quite a strong, um, yeah, quite a strong caramelly character as well. You can definitely smell some of the kind of grainier rice uh, not rice, the green or rye qualities out of this one as well, which is good. So um, yeah, just take a bit of time and enjoy the malt base of this of the enjoy the aroma of this malt base as well. It's got some really nice. Um, it really has some very nice kind of undertones to it, which is great. So a little bit of a woody character in there as well. That's just a very kind of subtle thing. You might pick up one or two little teeny nutty qualities, but for me, mainly a big kind of brown bready quality. A little bit of a toasty bread crust. Some sweeter, thicker caramel. I mean, at 8.8%, you are going to get a good bit of booziness out of this beer. Um, and, you know, there's also a little bit of that kind of thicker, treacly molasses sort of thing. The brown sugars, you can smell that they are quite um, big and toasted in this one. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind with this beer. It's got, a, it's got a lovely kind of big malt base to it. So in terms of the hoppy side of things then, um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, this one's got a lovely big kind of, um, it does have a little bit of that kind of dank, piney resinous quality to it. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a bit of Chinook in this one just going from the aroma. You can pick up that kind of distinctive resinous note, but it also has a little bit of that darker kind of tropical fruit in there. That's a really popular hop to use in terms of these Imperial Reds because of the way that the fruits interact with them, uh, the way that the, the resins and interact with the malts and the kind of fruity characters it will give from darker malt bases as well. So um, yeah, that's an interesting point to make about this beer. I think there's a bit of Chinook in here. I wouldn't be surprised if there's Cascade as well because it's got some of those distinctive notes. So there's a wee bit of earthiness there, big sort of resinous notes. You can pick out some lighter floral qualities as well and also some grassiness. But to me, it really comes across as a little bit dank and resinous. And um, on the fruity side of things, um, there's a wee bit of orange in there. Maybe there's a bit of Amarillo in this one as well, actually. Because I'm guessing, I know that that red rum bar has been around for a little bit. I think it said, I'm sure I read that it was 2016 or something, that the, um, or 2015 or so, that they opened up the red rum bar when I was researching this brewery originally. 
So probably if it's if this beer's been brewed around then, I would guess it's got a little bit of amarillo in it. You can definitely smell some of that thicker kind of oily orange, and it's got a kind of it's got a good little bit of a kind of grapefruit backing as well. So in terms of its fruitiness and its hoppiness, I find this one a little bit old school and kind of straight up. And if this beer's been around a few years, that would kind of make sense, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. But we're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Red Rum Special Edition and 8.8% Imperial Red IPA from AF Brew in St. Petersburg in Russia. Definitely cool to return to these guys and I'm very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skol, Nostrovia. It's actually in not too bad condition. You can tell. I mean, you can tell with this one. It's not at its. Uh, it's definitely not at its freshest or in its peak. But as it stands, it is still quite a nice beer. But I will say, I do think that importers, um, importers that are bringing in beers like this, have to make sure you know that they get into the shops in time, especially if you're dealing with a national entity like Seastemple Lager. This was the mistake that a, a number of things like Wicked Wines and Great Brands and all of this were doing before. They were bringing these American beers across far too early and the hops were dropping and by the time we actually got to drink them they just weren't in, in the best of conditions. This one isn't too bad, I will say that, but I will say to um, I will say to original brand Stockholm, that is something that you really need to sort out. It might well be because of red tape and things because obviously um, it might be harder to import stuff from Russia, but you cannot let these beers sit for you know two months in a warehouse or whatever before you get them out there. It's, they've got to be in and out pretty much. Bring them in a month, bring them in like two or three weeks before you plan to get them out there. That's a decent amount of time. Um, get them straight from the brewery, get them over here and put them in, and then get them out and see them below it. But as it stands, the beer is in pretty good. It is in okay condition. It's all right. So yeah, let's try and uh, break this one down a little bit then. Let's try and break down the flavour. So in the middle of your palate, you can feel that nice brown bready quality. That blankets the middle of the tongue. There is a wee bit of a toasty dryness to um, to this beer as well, actually. You can really feel there is a wee bit of a kind of, you know, it's really like a well-fired kind of brown sugar, maybe a bit of a really dark toasty rye. That could be as well, that could be well what's given it this um that could well be what's given it the colour actually of this beer would be the toasty kind of rye notes. But yeah, I like I really like how the malt base in this one goes together and that's what you need when it comes to an Imperial Red, you really need to get the um you really need to get the malt base right and I think they have done in this. So yeah. This beer, it gets it gets a thumbs up from me. I will say it's good, and I am taking into account that it's not quite in its um, in its prime condition. But yeah, um, so yeah, straight away with this one, you can feel that kind of brown bready base. That is what's blanket in the middle of the tongue. The further into the aftertaste you go, the more you get a little bit of that kind of toasted grainy quality out of the beer. In the very centre of your palate, you've got a nice kind of big sweet caramel on there it's almost it does have a little bit of that darker kind of treacly molasses thing about it um, and that's you can feel the sort of the, the, the roasty grainy notes just kind of coagulating around that and as you go to the back of the palate you do get a little bit more kind of dryness out of the beer as well but a big as I say roast it, it almost comes it when the the middle of your palate dries out in this one and it starts to become a little bit more of a kind of roast uh, bread like roasty bread crust type quality that comes out of this one actually so you really do get quite a bit of that out of this beer and especially further into the aftertaste and then you've got the bitterness from the hops kind of building into that as well so this this beer really does come across as quite bitter the more and more that you drink of it but yeah big sweet caramelly note in the middle of the palate quite a bit of a treacly molasses darkness to it and then pardon me those sort of toasty grainy notes kind of sitting underneath too but as you move out as you edge out towards the edge of the palate there's a wee bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity 
thing going on with this one. So um, yeah, it's you can pick up if you go to the front corners of the palette and move in. There are woody, there are really some woody undertones to this beer. The nutty notes that I was picking up in the aroma are not really prominent at all, but it definitely has a little bit of a, a woody kind of quality to it. Yeah, malt base on this, I do like it actually. It's got a good having that sweetness because it really does actually balance the sweetness, the graininess, and the toastiness together quite well. So this one really gets a big thumbs up for me in the malt base department. I mean, you've, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that I love the big kind of malty beers like the Scotch ales and the Doppel Box and the, the Quadruples and things like that as well. I really love these styles of beer. So this one hits the spot for me. It's quite cool to be able to try a Russian Imperial Red IPA for a big focus on the malt base. So on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there is a wee bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue that very quickly develops to be a sort of big piney resin note. I do suspect that there might, I think there might be Columbus in here as well because it's got some of that distinctive kind of floral spice you'd expect of Columbus but I think there's also some Chinook in there as well. But very quickly after you reach the front corners of the palate it just makes a transition and you get that lighter kind of grassiness around the um, the very kind of front edge of the tongue and behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. So let's look at that fruity side of it now. Yeah, um, if you go to the back of that oily part of your palate, you've got some nice, um, you do have a little bit of that darker kind of grapefruity quality in there. Um, and as you come further forward, it really is, it's it's very or orangey and oily. Um, I suspect, if I was guessing the hops that are in this, I think Columbus, Chinook, potentially Cascade and Amarillo. I think that's what they're um, their, their hoppiness is in this. There are Russian hops as well actually um, and I've heard of one or two of them. Um, there was actually a, a hop that I researched recently that was a descendant of one of the Russian hops and I really can't remember the name of it now but there are Russian hops so there is the chance that these hops that are in this beer um, are actually made on Russian farms somewhere so I don't know that's something I need to research a little bit more maybe the Russian breweries might start producing uh, their own Russian IPAs with Russian high alpha acid hops who knows and um, the, the craft beer scene in Russia is still quite quite young compared to other countries but you know they've got the potential there to do very well they've got a big population what is that about 130 million or something in Russia they've got a hell of a lot of farmland and um, you know, they've got people who uh, do like a drink, in my experience. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's been, it'll be interesting to see how the Russian beer scene evolves. You never know, you might start to get your own Russian hops. But I think um, this one, I'm pretty sure, I think this is Chinook, uh, Columbus, potentially Cascade, and I think a bit of Amarillo. It's got a lovely big oily orange quality to it, and it's got those darker kind of grapefruity notes. It's quite an old school um, Imperial Red IPA this one and I, and I like how this goes together it's just a shame that it's uh, it's it's a couple of weeks older than it really should be when it's um, when it's coming into say Stemble Lag that's you know um, original brands need to sort that out as I say I don't know whether it's red tape from uh, I don't know whether it's red tape on bringing things into the EU from Russia or exactly what it is but you know there is a bit of an onus there both on the brewery who are selling it to importers and also to the importer to get it there fresh. They both need to make sure that the product is getting there in good time because I, I think this might have been just from the amount of sediment and stuff that was there I think this one might have been sitting for a couple of weeks in a warehouse. And to be honest when it's a, an imperial red, you can get away with that a little bit longer than you can, for example, just you know a regular IPA or a regular double IPA. But it still shouldn't really happen. But that's me. That's me being uh, an angry Scot about it. Let's just say that. But as it stands, the beer, the condition that it's in just now, it is actually pretty nice. A red IPA should be a more kind of malty thing, and it should have these kind of big orangey and juicy fruits. And it does have that. It fits the bill. It really does kind of. Um, fit the bill but you can feel some of the hops and some of the big dankness that you get on the sides of the palate on this beer they're not quite as big as they would be 
if you had this one when it's like two or three weeks old in the bottle so um so yeah but yeah as it stands this is a really nice imperial red ipa and this is one that i'll definitely try to try um fresh in st petersburg when i go and visit there i really want to get to russia within the next kind of couple of years and uh, have a trip you know at least at least go to moscow st petersburg but i'd love to do a whole thing from you know uh, archangelsk in the or Murmansk and Archangels, it'd be cool to go down there and then go all the way all the way across to uh, to Vladivostok. I know it is possible with the Trans Siberian, so my cousin and I are quite keen to do that. We need to see. That's a, a sort of pipe dream um, thing, but we need to see if that uh, maybe that could be worked out at some point. We'd, we both of us would love to do that, and it's quite cheap to go to Russia, from what I understand, apart from the the visa. But um, yeah, this one um, is a lovely Imperial Red IP and I would definitely love to try this fresh on tap. I think this would be awesome if you had this at the Red Rum Bar or the, the Brewery Tap Room actually. Cool. Awesome. Um, so yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say that this beer is pretty mid-bodied, well no it's actually quite full-bodied, it's at the bottom end of full-bodied. The carbonation is really smooth, you've got a lovely big um, kind of, you've got a lovely sort of oiliness to this beer as well which is great, that really suits it and brings out the malty characters and some of the fruitiness as well, but I'd say, I'd say yeah this is a big oily um, IP, it's basically what you would expect from a West Coast double IP, it's got that type of mouthfeel to it, um, but yeah some lovely big um, some lovely sweetness to the malt base in here. It does have a little bit of a toasty kind of grainy note to it in my opinion. Um, but you get some of the big oily brown sugary sweetness in the middle of the palate too. You've also got a big a hoppy bitterness to this one. I think this has got to be about 80 IBUs at least. It might even be the full 100. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it does feel as if it's quite high in IBUs. Which again is what you'd expect of the, the West Coast examples of this style. And you've also got a lovely big oily fruity character this one some dark grapefruits and also some nice kind of um, lighter oranges in there as well so yeah interesting beer this one I have to say so um, yeah let's leave it at that for the tasting side of things I think even though this one is a little bit old uh, older than it should be when we're getting it um, I think it did turn out pretty damn nice this is a brewery that I've had good experiences with in the past and uh, you know this it certainly the fact that this beer was a little bit older didn't really dent that um, you know this is a very these guys are a very very capable brewery and producing on, along the same standard if you like that we're finding in uh, different countries in the EU and things so you know big thumbs up to uh, to Red Rum for to not to Red Rum sorry to AF Brew for this one I think they've pulled off a really nice um, red imperial imperial red ipa i should say i think this is another very very nice beer from these guys so um yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one was the red rum an imperial red ipa at 8.8 percent .8 from af brew in st petersburg in russia i think this turned out pretty nicely as, as i say it was a little bit older than it should have been but um yeah it's still a very nice it still turned out to be a very very nice beer i wouldn't let it go until the best buy date on this you know um you really want to drink these ipas maximum to you know this is the sort of maximum that you should be kind of drinking these ipas out of the bottle two months in is where they, they really should kind of finish up with them so um yeah let's leave it at that for this one once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from af brew as well you will see one more review from these guys within the next couple of days i'll film that probably tonight or something like that i get to work from home at the moment which is great but um i'll probably film that other one tonight and uh, you will see that i've also got a collaboration between zagovor and brewski that you'll see within the next few days as well so keep an eye out for those definitely nice to be reviewing some more russian beers for you and hopefully we can um you know, hopefully that's something that I can continue over the next little while. I would love to review the Russian beers more regularly because they've always tended to be pretty damn good. So, um, yeah, nice to see more Russian beer here in Europe. I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. And like I say, hopefully I can get out to St. Petersburg within the next couple of years and uh, have a little look around. So, um, yeah, this one was the Red Drum, an Imperial Red IPA, 8.8% from AF Brew, Anti-Factory in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Until the next time, it's Slanger just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanger, school, Nostrovia.